uh, algebraic conference. Uh, so today I would like to talk about the uh, torsion in linearized Lucian variant contact homology. My talk will be uh, partially in uh, algebra, mostly in geometry, but at least you will see some uh, differential graded algebras, you will see some homology theory. So I hope from this perspective, it will be enough algebraic. So uh, let me start with some motivation. So in general, this topic uh, comes from so-called uh, contact geometry. And contact geometry is a study of uh, geometric structures on smooth manifolds that are given by uh, hyperplane distributions with the property uh, that uh, they are not uh, integrable. In other words, they are completely non-integrable. Uh, so in general, contact manifolds appear in uh, geometric optics, they appear in thermodynamics, and in particular, second law of thermodynamics dynamics can be formulated as this non-integrability condition. So the second law of thermodynamics can be seen as a uh, contact form on so-called universal deep space. And um, uh, they are, in a, if you wish, uh, can be seen as a uh, odd dimensional counterpart of uh, symplectic manifolds that naturally appear in uh, uh, Hamiltonian mechanics. And uh, 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 we would like to study today so-called uh, Gendrian submanifolds of uh, contact manifolds. Um, I'll give a proper definition slightly later, uh, but um, if you wish, if, uh, if you have some understanding of, uh, I don't know, Foucault categories of homological neurosymmetry, and if you like Lagrangians, let me say that the Gendrians, they are just uh, uh, contact versions of Lagrangians. They are like uh, intimately uh, related to Lagrangians. And um, for Legendrian submanifolds, there are many invariants. Uh, today, I would like to study an algebraic one. So this is a modern invariant. And uh, it's uh, uh, basically an invariant that was defined by Elias Berg, given talent Hofer, and independently by Yuri Shikano. And it can be seen as a part of so-called uh, symplectic field theory framework. So uh, this homology theory that I would like to uh, talk about is the homology of a certain differential graded algebra. This differential graded algebra is called Chukanov and Elishberg, uh algebra, and it's named after Yuri Chukanov and Yasha Elishberg. Uh, it's a unital, this algebra is a unital non commutative differential graded algebra, which is freely generated by some generically finite set of objects. And these objects are of geometric nature. So there are some integral curves of a certain vector field, which is called the Lie vector field, that start and end on a given uh, Legendrian submanifold that we would like to study. So in other words, we have a submanifold. We consider some vector field. We consider uh, integral curves of this vector field that start and end at this submanifold, and uh, we form some uh, like abstractly some algebra, which is freely generated by this uh, by this. Uh, uh, by this integral curves. And um, uh, if we linearize this algebra, then somehow the linearizations of this algebra are related to rep floor homology uh, theories, at least in the geometric uh, settings. And uh, hence, uh, they can be related to so-called rep Foucault categories. And uh, from this perspective, also to homological mirror symmetry in the uh, non-compact settings, namely homological mirror symmetry, let's say for uh, Liouville domains or for Weinstein domains. Now, uh, what is the result? So what do we want to discuss today? Uh, so the point is that uh, this uh, chicano felersberg algebra that I mentioned, uh, they are uh, quite difficult to define and uh, quite difficult to deal with. And uh, for a while, people played only or worked only with the uh, field coefficients and uh, in particular with Z2 coefficients. So of course, working with uh, field coefficients, Z2 coefficients, it's, uh, it was impossible to see the torsion. And uh, one could ask, uh, let's say, if one gets out of field coefficients story, for example, if one gets to the integral coefficients that naturally appear in this situation, uh, can one get uh, some elements of finite order in the homology? And uh, uh, or one can ask more generally whether arbitrary finitely generated abelian group can be realized as a uh, linearized uh, Legendrian contact 
homology or cohomology of some legendium. And uh, the answer to this question that uh, I would like to present today uh, is of the following type. So if uh, uh, the dimension is high enough, uh, namely uh, for a given finitely generated group G and uh, fix a uh, natural number I uh, in dimension uh, 2I plus seven, if you consider standard Euclidean uh, vector space with some standard contact structure, I'll explain what it means in a minute, uh, then uh, we can find some linearization of the uh, Legendrian contact homology with the property that uh, its group is isomorphic uh, to G. In other words, every finitely generated abelian group can be realized this way. Uh, okay, so now let me talk a bit about, uh, let me provide some contact preliminaries, so let me provide the proper definitions. So a uh, contact manifold in general is a 2n plus 1 dimensional manifold uh, with a maximally non-integrable hyperplane field. Usually it's denoted by psi. And uh, even though this definition sounds a bit complicated, uh, what it means is that uh, basically this distribution, this uh, hyperplane field can be given as a kernel of some one form alpha. And this one form alpha should satisfy a property that alpha of HD alpha to the nth of H power is uh, uh, different from zero, namely it never vanishes. Uh, in this case, this kernel is called a contact structure and this one form is called the uh, contact one form which defines a contact structure. Now, if we fix our manifold and if we fix our uh, not contact structure, but contact form, which defines contact structure. As you can see from the previous definition, basically for one uh, contact structure, one can have many contact forms. So if one has at least one contact form, then multiplication with an over vanishing function will uh, give another contact form. So basically to one contact structure, one, one can associate many contact forms. But as far as this contact form is fixed, we can define so-called the vector field. And uh, the three vector field is basically given by two conditions. The first condition is that it's everywhere transfers to the contact structure. In other words, our one form whose kernel provides contact structure evaluated that this vector field is equal to one. And uh, the other, so this is just a normalization property uh, when we assume that this vector field is everywhere transfers to the contact structure. And the second uh, condition is that uh, the inner product of uh, D alpha is a uh, of uh, our D of a contact form and this vector field is equal to zero. Morally speaking, it means that the flow of the uh, re vector field preserves contact structure. So uh, what is the basic example? The basic example we consider a standard Euclidean vector space, R to the 2n plus one. And uh, there we consider uh, standard coordinates, namely X sub one, Y sub one, uh, dot, 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 X sub n, Y sub n, and Z. And uh, we take a one form, which is basically dz minus sum of yi dxi. So this is a one differential form, and uh, we consider the kernel of this one form. So if you take, let's say, n equals to one, then you can see uh, this distribution of planes that appear on the picture. So basically you can see uh, this type of like a nice distribution. Why it's funny because if you consider like any, uh, let's say X equals constant line, let's say an XZ plane, you will see something like a propeller. And uh, so this type of picture is usually called the propeller picture, somehow the standard contact structure. So uh, this contact structure is called the standard. And uh, let me also mention that uh, on R to the 2n plus 1, re vector field, one can check easily is equal to uh, d over dz. So basically, it's just a, a very simple vector field. It doesn't have any closed orbits. Uh, yeah, just a standard d dz, basically. So uh, now, Legendrian submanifolds. What's the proper definition? Legendrian submanifold is uh, basically uh, an n dimensional submanifold. So if the contact manifold is of dimension two n plus one, then Legendrian submanifold is n-dimensional submanifold, which is everywhere tangent to the contact structure. And uh, uh, let me also say that from now on, we will work only with the 
contact manifold, which is just a Euclidean space with the standard contact structure. Um, and in particular, we can uh, do it this way, or we can uh, specialize this situation because in, in uh, contact geometry, uh, there is so-called Darboud theorem, which says that every contact manifold always locally looks like this standard uh, Euclidean space with a standard contact structure. So there are no like interesting local results, and somehow what appears uh, uh, in uh, R to the two n plus one can be uh, seen in any contact manifold, uh, like a, if you consider a point and a small enough neighborhood of it. Okay. Now, uh, so re vector field uh, uh, in this case, as I said, is DDZ, and we will consider so called rib ports, in other words, integral trajectories of free vector field that start and end on our given Legendrian submanifold. And the set of such trajectories will be denoted by Q lambda. Now, what is this Chicano Felishberg algebra? I already uh, mentioned it, uh, mentioned the definition in the motivation, but let me say it again. So, the Chicano Felishberg algebra uh, lambda for a given Legendrian submanifold lambda is a, a non-commutative unital differential graded algebra over a field F. Typically, people take the two, but uh, more sophisticated fields are fine, freely generated by Q lambda. Uh, so in a way, it's just a tensor algebra. Uh, there is a certain gradient. This gradient is given by so-called Conley-Zender index. I will not mention that. So let me just say that it's some numbers that you can associate basically to each uh, generator, and then you can uh, uh, expand, uh, you can extend basically this uh, definition to other elements of the algebra. And uh, so the more interesting thing is the differential. So the differential uh, comes from count of a certain rigid holomorphic curves. And uh, from this perspective, this uh, chicano felish algebra business and in general, different on the homology business can be seen as a part of the symplectic field theory. So uh, now let me explain uh, what the differential on a rib chord is. So what's the differential on one of the generators of this algebra is. So uh, differential on a generator, let's say C plus on a chord C plus is given by some numbers times words Okay, so DC plus is equal to some number times word C1 minus CK minus. And what is this number? Okay, the definition of this number comes from a certain count of curves. So basically we consider a moduli space of a holomorphic curves uh, in product of our contact manifold namely in product of R to the 2M plus one, this one additional R. Uh, uh, and uh, there on this product, we consider a symplectic form, which is a D of E to the S and then times our standard contact form, where S is a coordinate on the first R. And uh, on this product, we will have even dimensional manifolds. There we can consider uh, uh, there we can consider almost complex structure. In other words, we consider endomorphism of the tangent bundle uh, J with the properties that J square is equal to minus identity. And it should be compatible with the contact structure. So uh, how? First of all, it should map contact structure to itself. It should map uh, this uh, uh, S direction, namely DDS to DDZ. And uh, there is certain positivity condition, which is D alpha standard of VJV is greater than V, uh, is greater than zero for each V in the contact structure. So there is some compatibility condition. So basically, we consider this product and there we consider almost complex structure. And uh, we consider disks uh, closed. Uh, I mean, we, we consider disks with this boundary, unit disks with boundary living in C. And uh, on this bound, on this uh, on the boundary of our uh, disks, uh, we remove some points. Namely, we consider disks with the punctures on the boundary. We remove points, let's say x uh, and y1 dot 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 yk. These disks 
We can imagine them as living in C with a standard complex structure, where complex structure is just multiplication by I in C, as usual. And now we would like to map these disks into this product R to the uh, times R to uh, R times R to the two n plus one, we, uh, in such a way that the boundary of such disk will be mapped to the cylinder over the Legendrian that we consider, and these punctures will be uh, asymptotic to the rib cords. They will be asymptotic to the generators of our algebra. One puncture X in this case will be asymptotic to C plus and the uh, punctures Y1, YK, they will be asymptotic to C1 minus CK minus, okay? And uh, uh, we want this uh, maps to be, as I said, holomorphic and holomorphic in which sense they should be IJ holomorphic. Namely, on C, we have standard complex structure I on this product R to the uh, R times uh, R to uh, 2N plus one, we have this uh, almost complex structure J. One can write cauchy riemann equation in this case for such maps of disks. And uh, we consider moduli space of such maps, right? So uh, basically the numbers that we have in the, uh, uh, in the formula for differential on the generator are given by some uh, numbers that are dimensions of the moduli space of holomorphic curves uh, of such holomorphic disks that we just described. Now in the formula, you can also see this quotient in by R. What does it mean? It means that basically as far as you can find one, uh, uh, one uh, disk, let's say, this positive asymptotic at C plus and negative asymptotics with C1 minus CK minus, as far as you can find one such polymorphic disk, if you push it in S direction, namely, if you push it in uh, this uh, extra R direction that you get in the product, uh, it will still uh, remain being uh, holomorphic. So from this perspective, we consider moduli spaces only of dimension one, so that after taking quotient by this R, they will become zero dimensional. And uh, by Gromov compactness theorem, we will know that we will have a compact zero dimensional manifold. And compact zero dimensional manifold means that we will have finite number of points and we just count them, okay? So in the end of the day, D of the differential is just a number of elements in the certain, uh, in the quotient of a one dimensional modular space, which is a zero dimensional manifold by the uh, Gromov compactness theorem and then times work. So the definition is quite uh, complicated. Uh, and uh, in general, if somebody gives me a, a Legendrian manifold and one asks uh, for a computation of this algebra, it's quite difficult uh, to do basically because it's quite difficult to describe uh, the holomorphic uh, curves in a, a generic situation, okay? So uh, now we will also need like in order to deal with this algebra, we will also need another geometric object, which is so-called exact Lagrangian cuboidism. And somehow this exact Lagrangian cuboidism, they, uh, uh, they will basically provide a way to define, let's say, uh, morphisms between this Chicano-Pellersberg algebras of a Legendrian submanifolds. So uh, what is the exact Lagrangian cuboidism? The exact Lagrangian cuboidism is just uh, between two Legendrian submanifolds lambda minus and lambda plus uh, um, is uh, basically an uh, exact Lagrangian submanifold in the symplectic manifold, which is a product of uh, R with R to the 2m plus 1, with the symplectic forms that I described on the previous page, and it appears here again. And uh, uh, basically, this Lagrangian submanifold has a property that uh, whenever this extra R coordinate is big enough, it looks like a cylinder over lambda plus, namely uh, when, our, uh, uh, when our small t is big enough, we will have t times uh, t comma infinity times lambda plus. When our uh, extra, this, uh, this extra R direction, this extra R coordinate is small enough, maybe if it's smaller than some negative capital T, then it will be a product uh, with the Legendrian submanifold lambda minus. 
what appears in between is compact. And uh, we want to have this uh, additional exactness property. Basically, this exactness property will allow us to control the holomorphic curves that we described on the previous page. Uh, and uh, this exactness property means uh, that basically on the Lagrangian submanifolds, uh, we will have that uh, uh, our uh, uh, form e to the t alpha standard is a, a d of some function on the uh, defined on the Lagrange. Okay, so uh, we have this extra condition. Uh, in addition, if you don't have any lambda minus, uh, we can say that we, uh, we have uh, not exact Lagrangian cobordism, but so called exact Lagrangian theorem. So, in other words, if lambda minus is um, empty, Normally, we can say that it's empty, uh, then uh, we will have exact Lagrangian film. So, okay, so the definition looks a bit complicated. So, let me provide some pictures. Usually, pictures help. So, uh, the first uh, picture, let's say, uh, the left side of the picture that you can see is, let's say, exact Lagrangian cobordism from lambda minus to lambda plus, where lambda minus is at the bottom and lambda plus is on the top. And uh, the picture on the right side is basically exact Lagrangian helium of lambda plus, where lambda plus is basically a Lagrangian on the top, and uh, then we don't have anything on the bottom. Now, uh, with this type of geometric uh, uh, guys, uh, what happens is, uh, so Ekholm, Honda, and Kalman proved that uh, given exact Lagrangian cobordism from lambda minus to lambda plus, there is a uh, homomorphism of differential graded algebras uh, so, namely, we have a map from uh, chicano felersberg algebra of lambda plus to chicano felersberg algebra of lambda minus. And in particular, if lambda minus is an empty set, namely, if you don't have any lambda minus, then we have a, a differential graded algebra homomorphism that we call augmentation. And it will be a map from uh, chicano felersberg algebra of lambda plus to the chicano felersberg algebra of the bottom, but since we don't have any bottom, but it's supposed to be a unital algebra, we just have a ground ring with a zero differential. Okay, so this is so-called augmentation. Typically, augmentations help to uh, to linearize, so they are usually used uh, in order to linearize uh, chicano felersberg algebra. And uh, this uh, this map epsilon at least in the uh, case of helium, can be described once again as a column of uh, 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 holomorphic disks with only one puncture uh, uh, with a boundary on such helium. So as you can see on the picture. Uh, now let me explain how to prove what we would like to prove. Okay, so we have the theorem that we would like to prove. We would like to prove that basically uh, our uh, chicano felersberg algebra can be linearized uh, 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 in such a way that basically every finitely uh, generated abelian group uh, uh, will be, a, uh, let's say, a linearization uh, of the chicano felersberg uh, so the homology of the linearization of the chicano felersberg algebra. So how to prove something like that? First, we'll prepare some geometric object that uh, will help us. So this geometric object will be of the following type. So we'll prepare some manifold, basically of arbitrary dimension, high enough, uh, with the property that it's so-called spin. So uh, spin means that the uh, second Stiefel Whitney plus vanishes, and it's necessary for some of this, uh, uh, for some of the uh, analysis uh, uh, of uh, 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 modular spaces. And uh, so I won't explain that, but let me say that you would like to prepare some manifold, which is spin, and uh, which has a property that the first uh, uh, the first singular homology uh, is uh, isomorphic to an arbitrary uh, finitely generated abelian. So uh, let's say if you have a finitely generated abelian group G, we can write it down as a product of the free part and the uh, torsion part. Maybe we have ZK times ZP1 blah 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 ZPS. And uh, uh, what do we do? Uh, basically, you can first form a three manifold uh, with the property that the first uh, homology uh, is isomorphic uh, to G, how? 
Uh, basically, for each of the distortion parts, we can uh, tweak so-called length spaces. Uh, so in this case, we will take LP1, Q1, blah, 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 LPS, QS. So these length spaces are three manifolds with the property that H1 of the length sp space LPI, QI with Z coefficients uh, is isomorphic to ZPI, okay? And uh, in addition, we will take a uh, product of S1 times S2, product of one dimensional sphere and two dimensional sphere. And the property is that uh, the first homology of, we know that the first homology of this guy is isomorphic to Z. And then we take a connected sum of all the subjects. And this way, we'll get a three manifold with the property that uh, H1 of it is isomorphic to G. And uh, uh, Actually, in dimension three, so we will get an orientable manifold, and we know that in dimension three, all orientable manifolds, uh, they are spin. So from this perspective, we know that our manifolds that we get is spin. And now we can, uh, uh, I mean, one can easily check that H1 is isomorphic to G for this three manifold. And uh, also we know that all spheres are spin and the product of spin manifolds is spin. So uh, basically by taking the product of our three manifold with the sphere of right dimension, you will get a, a manifold basically of uh, any arbitrary dimension. In this case of dimension uh, uh, I, uh, I plus one uh, with the property that H1 of this manifold N times S to the I minus two is isomorphic to G. Okay, so, so far we just constructed some uh, some uh, abstract manifold with the properties that H1 is isomorphic to G and this manifold is spin. Now, uh, there is so-called the uh, uh, Morpheus H principle. So um, basically uh, for uh, Legendrian submanifolds in high dimensions, there is a, uh, uh, one can, so Amy Murphy shows that in 2012, shows that uh, uh, basically for a, uh, for a special uh, submanifolds, uh, so called the uh, uh, loose Legendrian submanifolds, there is an H principle. Uh, in other words, every uh, smooth isotopy uh, can be realized as a Legendrian isotopy if some uh, topological abstractions are satisfied. And for us, what we will use, we will use some special uh, version of it, uh, which basically uh, implies that every closed spin and dimensional manifold. Uh, can be seen as a Legendrian uh, in the standard uh, uh, contact uh, manifold with the standard contact structure in the standard contact Euclidean space with a so-called vanishing mass of number. And uh, so from this perspective, we can realize our manifold, uh, this N times a sphere, we can realize our manifold of dimension I uh, plus uh, uh, one uh, from the free previous page. Right, we can realize it as a Legendrian submanifold. And uh, uh, now the problem with this uh, Murphy's H principle is that if one uses it, if one realizes our Legendrian, then uh, the algebra of it always dies, unfortunately. So it, it, it becomes the Chicano Felersberg algebra always becomes acyclic. So one cannot expect any homology. But uh, there is a trick for that. Uh, one can take a two copy of uh, our lambda, namely one can push lambda in the DDZ uh, direction, in the direction slightly, and take a uh, original Legendrian plus this push one. And uh, this is usually called the two copy and we denote it by uh, lambda bar. And then there was a result of Monke, which guarantees basically that this lambda bar admits exact Lagrangian filling, uh, which is diffeomorphic to the original Legendrian times R. Uh, uh, this feeling has a mass of number zero. And uh, we would like to linearize our chicano felier algebra with respect to the augmentation coming from this field. Now, how we can realize, uh, linearize it for that we will use uh, isomorphism. Yeah, so uh, we would like to study these linearizations and uh, uh, in order to see uh, like, uh, in order to relate somehow our linearization, linearizations uh, to the H1 of our manifolds that we described, we need so-called isomorphism of Seidel, Ekholm, and dimitri Glorizel. So it turns out that there is a way to, lin uh, to relate linearized Legendrian contact cohomology to the singular homology of an exact Lagrangian feeling. It was first predicted by Seidel, and it's a consequence of the red floor uh, homology on exact sequence. 
and uh, then it was uh, extended by Coleman Dimitrov Rizal. Basically, it says that uh, uh, so the ice uh, linearized Legendrian contact uh, cohomology of a Legendrian is isomorphic to the n minus ice uh, homology, singular homology of a human. Unfortunately, it was proven with the two coefficients, but with the modern techniques, one can extend it so that it works with z coefficient. So from this perspective, the ice uh, cohomology, linearized Legendrian contact cohomology, is isomorphic to the n minus ice homology. And uh, with this in mind, with this in mind, we can uh, uh, and uh, with the uh, uh, observation uh, about uh, the uh, uh, singular homology groups of a uh, uh, Legendrian uh, that we have and hence of the filling, since we know that the filling is actually a product of a Legendrian bizarre, we can say that the cohomology uh, can realize any uh, friendly uh, generated abelian group. Thanks a lot for your attention. Uh, and uh, uh, yeah, it was a pleasure to talk. <laughs>